Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and when I redid, remodeled my filming area a few months ago, it was amazing how many people commented on the math clock, uh, asking where I got it, why is it so quiet, and then just obviously, you, you know, the, the placement of the numbers and the coolness of it. So today I thought I'd have just a little bit of fun, and we'd solve, or we'll solve uh, all the numbers, well, you know, the ones that aren't, you know, obvious. Uh, where did I get the clock is a very common question. Um, my wife got it for me online. I looked, the place doesn't sell it anymore. It was either like What on Earth or Signals Catalog. Uh, but just Google math clock and you'll see a bunch of them. But you know, people asking, it doesn't, let's see, here we go. It doesn't tick. But I mean, I have a lot of wall clocks that do this. It's just a normal sweep. Is it noisy? Ready? Not really. If you're like two feet away from it, you won't you won't hear much. Um, and it runs on a double A battery. It's basically just a motor spinning through a gear reduction. Yeah, anyway, for my own wrist check, since people are getting upset that I wasn't doing wrist checks, a spinnaker. And uh, ever since I did the uh, Mecha Chords video, uh, I started wearing the the Zen 757 again. Anyway, let's uh, let's uh, solve this clock. So before we start, we'll take a look at the clock. So, so you can, I don't know if you always see it on the wall, what all the uh, numbers around the outside are. Uh, so here they are from 1 to 12 or from 12 to 11 or however you want to say it. And I brought a friend along. Um, you guys know I'm an engineer. Now people are going to probably ask where I got this thing. This is obviously a coffee mug. I got it at the Museum of Natural History in Manhattan in a gift shop. Uh, totally speaks to me. It's got so much cool stuff in it. Uh, you know, Planck's equations, gravitational equations, ideal gas law, Newton's laws, Einstein's uh, mass energy equation, look at that, Euler's equation, that's like a crazy one. Look, e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. Figure that one out. Uh, all sorts of good stuff. Um, and then for the remedial class, 1 plus 1 equals 2. <laughs> that's a good one. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> let's start. Let's start solving the clock. So if you disliked math, you can avert your eyes now. I laid out all 12 problems uh, here on the paper, and uh, it starts at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then it goes from uh, 7 to 12. I guess we kind of know the answers already. I'll shoot through, obviously, I mean subtraction. This one is 1. I, th this sign, square root of 4, radical 4, rad 4, it means what times what equals 4. The answer to that, obviously, is 2. Simple division, 66 into 198 is 3. Um, let's skip over this one for a second. Uh, 120, 630 divided by 126. Uh, you could do the long division if you want, but it's clearly 5. This guy, we have to multiply two fractions, so this would be 96 over 16. Sorry for the shakiness, uh, and that's 6. So, so far, I just want to make my own notes. We skip that one, okay? We're definitely going to the, skip the quadratic. We'll do it in a minute. Uh, so, same thing, square root of 64, radical 64. What times what equals 64? That's going to be our 8. Uh, pi day just passed. So, this is pi, uh, an irrational number that many people abbreviate 3.14. It does go on forever, but if you did abbreviate it 3.14, this would be then 3 times 2 to the parenthesis, uh, 3.14 minus 0.14 is 3, so 3 times 3, 9. A little algebra, uh, you've got to take um, take the 2 to this side. It would be minus 8, minus 2 is minus 10, but it's a negative x, so you have to flip it, flip the sign. It's going to be 10. Straight division, this is 11, and then 6 times 2 is 12. The dot uh, will take to be, the dot means multiplication. It's the same as, uh, you know, 6, you know, kind of 6x2, if you will. Uh, just when you get into vectors, it, it, you know, this means cross, this means dot product. It's totally different, but for now, it's all good. So what did we skip? Uh, we skipped the fraction and the quadratic. So let's just um, come down to the fraction for a minute. So 50 over 2 equals uh, 100 over x. So the, I guess this is the way they teach you in school, uh, I'm guessing, would be to cross multiply. This times this, since they're equal fractions, this times this has to equal this times this. So 50 times x has to equal 200. So 50x equals 200, and in that case, x equals 4, right? So divide this by 50. 50x divided by 50 is x. 
200 divided by 50 is 4. Uh, another way to think about it, it, you know, this is all now different ways to solve problems and how you think about things in your brain. 50 is 25 times 2. So 100 is 25 times what? 25 times 4. Um, that's probably how I would have solved it in my head. Um, but that's, uh, so that's, you know, ratios, fractions, equivalent fractions, cross multiplying, whatever you want to call it. Let's head over to the quadratic. I just realized um, this should be x. I, I copied it from the clock wrong. That's why it's a quadratic. So I just fixed it right here. So this equation reads 52 minus x squared plus x equals 10. This is easily the most difficult one to solve of the whole bunch, but this is still, I would say, uh, early high school math. Um, so it's a quadratic equation, which means there's two roots to the equation. One of them will not make sense, and the other one will be the answer. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at the clock. We already know the answer is going to be 7, uh, but let's work it out. So what do we do? Well, it's a quadratic, so what I'd like to do is bring the x squared, I'm used to seeing it this way, bring the x squared term over to the other side, the x over to the other side, uh, the constants over to the other side, make the whole thing equal to 0, and then solve it. So if I bring the x squared over, I'm going to x squared minus x minus 42 equals 0. See what I, I, maybe you don't see what I did there. Add x squared to both sides, subtract x from both sides, and uh, subtract 52 from both sides. And you get x squared minus x minus 42 equals 0. These are the same thing. You can solve this two ways. You could factor this, or you can use the quadratic formula. Uh, if you want to use the quadratic formula, you can. Uh, the roots are going to be, uh, let's see, negative b plus or minus, it's all coming out of my head, by the way, uh, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You might be asking, what are the a, b, and c? Well, the, it's all the coefficients. So in this case, a equals 1, the coefficient of x squared. b equals negative 1, the coefficient of the x term. And c is uh, negative 42. You can plug that into here, do a plus once, then do a minus, and you will get uh, each of your roots. Uh, but we're just going to factor it, because factoring is, is fairly simple. Uh, so we know that it's going to be an x plus something, x minus something uh, term. So x squared, this is how you factor. I, and again, you know, if you, if you went to engineering school and if you are good at math, you'll, remember, you'll probably remember this stuff. So what are we looking for? We're looking for factors of 42 that subtract to be 1. Uh, so the factors of 42 that subtract to be 1 are going to be 7 and 6. This sign tells us that each of these will be different. The bigger one will be negative. And the other one will be positive. That's it. Uh, so to get this to be 0, either this whole term is 0 or this whole term is 0. So you get two equations, x minus 7 equals 0 or x plus 6 equals 0. And that means that x can equal 7 or minus 6. Okay, uh, so minus 6 is the answer that makes no sense because we're talking about time. Time needs to be positive, so the answer is 7. Uh, that's the quadratic formula. Uh, that's the way to solve it by factoring. Excuse me. This is the quadratic formula that uh, you could, I think I got this right. I, I guess I pulled it out of my head. I haven't done it in a long time. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> if I'm wrong, someone will correct me. I'm not even going to look it up. Um, and just out, of, you know, just out of curiosity or, you know, if, if you are curious, what, what does this mean? Well, we can graph this equation, and we know that it crosses the y, if we set it equal to 0, it crosses the y-axis at x equals 7 and minus 6. I'm just approximating. And when x equals 0, uh, the whole equation equals negative 42, so it's somewhere way down here. So it's some kind of curve. I don't know, uh, quadratics are usually like this, or like this. Um, I know it's certainly like this, but I do not know where the flat part is. And I'll just take 30 seconds, and if you take the first derivative of this equation with respect to x, you can solve for 0 and find out at what value, I know, crazy, right? Uh, at what value the slope is 0, and that would be the minimum. So if I did take the first derivative of this, it would be, uh, what, 2x minus 1 equals 0. So. 2x minus 1 equals 0. Uh, it's 2x equals 1, so x equals a half. 
So when x equals one half, so, so a really small number, this is all the way at its minimum. So what is the y value? Well, I can just plug it into here and I can do the math. Uh, let's see, so it's a quarter minus a half. It's almost, this is almost basically where, where it bottoms out. And I'm very close, it's probably somewhere like over here. So this curve looks like this. Uh, so it's a quadratic equation, these are the two roots, and that's how you solve it. Again, on the clock, it looks super complicated. Um, excuse me, on the clock it looks simple. Um, solving it, kind of complicated. Um, it's not exactly college level math, but uh, it is fun to know that you can do it. You know, and all the differentials, uh, the derivatives and stuff, I mean, this is it's a foundation of engineering and uh, a lot of mathematics. Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, this has been Mark from LongIWatch.com showing you how to solve the all famous math clock. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. If you have any questions or comments, <laughs> put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.